بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. The second lesson about divine unity from the Quranic statements on divine attributes referred to in the foregoing pages, foregoing speeches, we have learnt about God that He is all-knowing. He knows what is apparent as well as what is hidden. He is omnipresent. He is the creator and sustainer of the worlds and the master and preserver of the universe. And whatever is happening here is at His command and bidding. All the glory and greatness belongs to Him and He is free from want and does not stand in need of anything. Everyone is dependent upon Him and He is dependent on no one. He is most kind and merciful, but at the same time He is just and fair and is going to require everyone for the good or evil he may have done in his earthly life. In addition to it, we have also seen that God is higher and superior to everything that may bear the faintest trace of a fault or weakness or be derogatory to his attributes of purity and sublimity. Once it is accepted that there is someone who is so superlatively perfect and in whom all these splendid virtues are assembled in their most evolved and immaculate form, it follows automatically that he alone is worthy of our obedience and submission and besides him there is no one who may be worshipped. All his wishes should be carried out with the reverence and regarding him to be our maker and master and ourselves his humble slaves we must obey his commands and injunctions faithfully and without question. We are to look forward only to his help to supplicate to no one save him for our needs and to make him alone the center of our hopes and desires and trust and reliance. He is the one who he is the one towards the earning of whose good graces we should always strive and for the sake of whose pleasure it should be our duty to live and die. We should adore no one but him celebrate only his praises and make his remembrance the chief occupation of our lives. It is because of this that often during the discussion on divine attributes in the Quran the concept of Tawheed, divine unity, has been treated as an accepted fact and a self-evident reality. As the readers themselves would have noticed while going through some of the verses, there may as much appear to be no need to enter into a full lengthy study of it. But since this concept forms the central theme of the message of the Quran and the, piv and the pivot of its teachings and in the earlier scriptures also the greatest stress was laid on the oneness of God and more importance was attached to it than to any other question. We have decided to devote a separate chapter to the examination of the Quranic viewpoint on it. The teachings of the Quran and Tawheed are so clear and exhaustive that no aspect of it has been left in the dark. It was also necessary for them to be so, for this issue has led to the undoing of many a people at all stages of history. It would not be incorrect to say that more mistakes have been committed on this score than in respect of any other article of a spiritual belief, although all the prophets 
and genuine religious preachers had consistently informed their followers that there was no God but one God and he alone was worthy of worship and obedience. The Quran positively asserts that no people or community in the world has been left without the message of divine unity having been conveyed to it by the august apostles of the Lord. وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ الرَّسُولًا أَنِعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَجْتَنِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ And verily we have raised in every nation a messenger proclaiming serve Allah and shun false gods. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَعَبُدُونَ and we have sent no person no messenger before thee but we inspired him saying there is no god save me allah so worship me alone in every community of the in every, in every community the prophets raised up by god have uniformly preached the gospel of divine oneness but with the passage of time a majority of them slipped back into polytheism and even now the position with most of the people is that while they believe in god and affirm their faith in him they are guilty of entertaining and upholding polytheistic beliefs and practices in one form or another وَمَا يُؤْمِنُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ بِاللَّهِ إِلَّا وَهُمْ مُشْرِكُونَ And most of them believe in Allah and at the same time attribute partners unto Him. Polytheism in any case has been the commonest and most grievous failing of mankind and it is precisely for this reason that the Quran has given so much importance to the doctrine of Tawheed and made it the principal theme of its teaching. In the Quran, moreover, every possible effort has been made to eliminate the causes that had given rise to polytheism in the earlier communities and ensure against the likelihood of its, of its emergence in future. The Quran does not content itself merely with proclaiming that God is one and He alone should be adorned and worshipped. But in addition to stressing the unity of being, it takes up every attribute of the Lord and declares that it belongs solely to Him. And just as He is one and unpartnered in His nature and existence, in his authority and attributes to his unique and without an equal or so share or co sharer The Quran has dealt with all these aspects of Tawheed with such clarity and thoroughness that it has now become completely fortified against pollution by any kind of polytheistic untruths open or hidden and conceptual or practical. We shall now arrange some of the Quranic verses concerning monotheism in different sections and under separate titles. Unity of Being A most simple, forthright and comprehensive enunciation of the concept of Tawheed is that God is just one and no one aside of Him is worthy of obedience or worship. Your God is one God. There is no God save Him, the beneficent, the merciful. وَمَا مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ there is no God save Allah. Allah, Allah is the mighty and wise. Inna ilahakum lawahid, Rabbu samawati wal ardi wa ma baynahuma. Lo, thy Lord is surely one, Lord of the heavens and of the earth, and all that is between them. Qul innama huwa ilahu wahid. وَإِنَّنِي بَرِيءٌ مِّمَّا تُشْرِكُونَ Say, O Prophet, 
is only one God, and lo, I am innocent of that which ye associate with him. فَإِلَهُكُمْ إِلَهُ وَاحِدٌ فَلَهُ أَسْلِمُ Your God is one God, then surrender unto him. Unity of functions and attributes. Besides this simple affirmation of the unity of God in his being, the, in his being, the Quran insists that he is one and absolute in its functions, in his functions, and absolute in his functions and attributes as well. He is the sole creator and nourisher of all existing things, and it is he alone who gives life and causes death. Allah الذي خلقكم ثم رزقكم ثم يميتكم ثم يحييكم هل من شركائكم من يفعل من ذلكم من شيء سبحانه وتعالى عما يشركون Allah is He who created you and then sustain, sustain you and then causeth you to die, then giveth life to you again. Is there any of your so-called partners of Allah that does or can do any, any of these things? Praise and exalted be He above what they associate with Him. هَلْ مِنْ خَالِقٍ غَيْرُ اللَّهِ يَرْزُقُكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ فَأَنَّا تُؤْفَكُونَ Is there any creator other than Allah who provided for you from the sky and the earth? There is no God save him whether then or ye time. قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ شُرَكَاءَكُمُ الَّذِينَ تَدْعُونَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ أَرُونِي مَاذَا خَلَقُوا مِنَ الْأَرْضِ أَمْ لَهُمْ شِرْكٌ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ Tell about your partners, partner gods to whom ye pray besides Allah. Show me what they created on the earth, or have they any share in the heaven? إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ لَا يَمْلِكُونَ لَكُمْ رِزْقًا فَابْتَغُوا فَابْتَغُوا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ الرِّزْقَ وَاعْبُدُوهُ وَاشْكُرُوا لَهُ إِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ Lord, those whom you serve instead of Allah own no provision for you. So seek your provision from Allah and serve Him and give thanks unto Him. For unto Him ye will be brought back. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين